Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today I'm doing another code companion video. And this one is going to be telling you a little bit more about how I built my blockchain lawnmower prototype for the video that I did explaining tokenization. So I created this blockchain lawnmower prototype to talk about the idea of non-fungible tokens and how we might live in a future world where we trade assets like homes, cars, or even theoretically lawn tractors on a blockchain instead of having government agencies manage those titles and trading physical keys. So I want to talk about the different parts of how I built this and uh, I just say what a fascinating and interesting code project this was to build. So the first thing that I had to do to get this project to work was to actually create a real non-fungible token on a blockchain. So for this project, I went with the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. Bitcoin Cash has a token standard called SLP, which stands for Simple Ledger Protocol, that makes it really easy for anyone to issue tokens out on the network. So I used the Electron Cash SLP wallet to create my new token that I just called like Chain Toots B Mower. Um, and it was really, really simple and easy to do. So I had to go into that wallet, uh, send that new wallet on my PC a little bit of Bitcoin Cash to cover the network fees, and then simply created a transaction using the wizard uh, that allowed me to create this new token. SLP offers support for both fungible and non-fungible token types, but I actually didn't have a need in this project to do the more advanced uh, NFT features. All I did is I created a token that is not divisible and simply has one token as the market cap. So I only have one Chain Toots blockchain mower token that can be passed around to different addresses, and that represents ownership of that asset. So the next thing is, how did I write the code to do this digital signature mechanism? So again, the idea with this project is you have a deed or a title for a real world asset represented uh, as a token on a blockchain. And so you send that token to a public address. And just like anything else with Bitcoin, that public key or public address is owned by a private key. So you have a public key that that asset is currently owned by that the rest of the network can check and see, yes, this address is the owner of this token. But in order for you to prove that you're the rightful owner of that address and therefore that asset, you can sign a message with your private key. For normal Bitcoin transactions, that means you actually sign a transaction when you go to send money to someone else. But for this concept of asset tokenization, we can uh, extend that in a different way to just simply do a challenge response with a digital signature. So I actually used Electron Cash's code as a base for what I needed to do for my project. Electron Cash is a great project and their code is available under an open source license. So what I did is I trimmed the code in their libraries down to just what I needed to do signature verification without having to set up a full Electron Cash wallet to deal with private keys and public keys and addresses. So I trimmed down that code and made it so that I could simply import that code into my Python script directly from Python instead of having to use something like uh, Python's popen feature to open a new process. This was much simpler and it's also a much cleaner way to code. So the way that this challenge response mechanism works is the starter module for the blockchain lawnmower fetches the current owning address from the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. And it can then cache that and store it in a file for offline use. Because uh, for this example prototype, we're using a lawn tractor and you wouldn't want to have to have your lawn tractor connected to Wi-Fi every time you wanted to start it. Uh, and the same could be said for vehicles and uh, homes and that sort of thing. So that starter module then knows the rightful owner of that address or the rightful owner of that asset because it has the address, which is a public key. So then you also want to make sure that somebody can't just reuse a digital signature all the time and, and constantly verify that they're the owner without actually uh, providing a recent signature. 
So what the starter module does is it sends a message to be signed to the um, owner's wallet. So it creates a message request that's based, it's a hash of the asset ID on the blockchain, a, uh, the owning address, and a current timestamp. So that makes sure that when we're doing our signature challenge response, the current owner of the device has to provide a recent signature to prove they actually have their wallet on hand. Now this message, this signing request, is sent back over to the owner's wallet. So in maybe a future real world example of this, you might have a mobile phone wallet that you can tap on your car dashboard over, uh, you know, uh, that uh, standard that allows you to do that, that NFC near field communication. But for this example, I actually just used a simple USB thumb drive. So I loaded some Python code and a private key for the owning address of the mower onto a USB key and have it plugged into the Raspberry Pi. So then that Python code runs, it takes the message request from the starter module and signs it with the private key. When it returns that over to the starter module, the starter module can simply then verify that that is a valid signature for that current owning address. And again, this is all done using Python code with the electron cache libraries as a base. Now, the final part of this is how do I actually hook this up to a lawn tractor and kind of hotwire my lawn tractor to get it to start? So this is actually becomes a really cool proof of concept. That was kind of a tricky part because, you know, I'm learning a lot as I go along in my life about working on mechanical things like my cars and my lawn tractors, but I definitely didn't know off the top of my head how to hotwire a tractor to get it to start on demand uh, without using the normal ignition key switch. So I figured out that there is a device on the tractor called a starter solenoid. And that solenoid internally connects a high amperage circuit between the battery and the lawnmower starter. Some of my original ideas included simply bypassing the starter solenoid, but as I found out with tinkering, that would require some really high amperage wires and be a little bit less safe to do than the way I ended up on. But the way that this works with your tractor and the ignition switch is when you turn the key in the ignition switch, it actually closes a circuit between the battery and the starter signal part of the solenoid. So there's a different circuit on that solenoid that takes a very low amperage uh, connection to it that signals that the solenoid should close and um, allow a connection on that very high amperage circuit for the starter. So what I did is I created a circuit between my mower's battery and the uh, starter solenoid's signal terminal. But in order to allow it to switch on and off on demand for this project, I ended up using a relay switch. I originally thought maybe I would have to drive um, a push-pull solenoid and actually physically connect two wires together to maybe get the circuit to work. Because um, you know, I'm new to electronics, I'm learning about what some of these concepts are. But when I did further research, I found this concept of a relay, which is an electronically controlled switch. So all I have to do is write my Python code that when the user presses a button and the signature is valid, this relay switch will close the circuits and uh, allow the mower to start by telling the starter solenoid it's time to close that circuit. So I'm gonna show you actually what this little box looks like here that I built for my starter module and explain how all these different parts work together. So you'll see on my PC screen that I have hooked up here for the Raspberry Pi, I have this Python code running that uh, you know prints a few debug messages and does this signature verification. The Raspberry Pi itself is just put in this little uh, this little box here. And so the Raspberry Pi has on top of it an accessory called the Adafruit Cricket that's useful for driving signal I.O. and solenoids and that sort of thing. Now, when the signature is determined to be valid, I wrote my code so that the user has 30 seconds from the time the code is validated to go ahead and start their mower using a push button start. So I have this little green LED here lit up to indicate uh, that they're able to go ahead and start the mower. And when you push this button, it, go, it uh, goes ahead and actually connects 
that relay signal. So it's re-verified a more recent signature here. That's why the LED flashed on and off. And now I can push the button and close the relay. And that relay has a handy little red light indicator on it to show you that it is currently active. So I'm filming this code companion in my office and obviously I do not have my lawn tractor um, stored inside my house, but that shows that that relay works. And when you actually have this connected to the real blockchain lawnmower, uh, these red wires here go between the battery and the starter solenoid and that circuit closes and starts up the lawn tractor. So again, this was a really fun and fascinating project to build. I really enjoyed, uh, of course, getting into some hands-on coding with cryptography again because I had to do all that work with Electron Cash and really understand how these digital signatures work. And I'll say the physical part of this was definitely the most challenging for me, which was figuring out how to safely bypass my lawnmower's ignition switch and control my lawn tractor electronically. Um, you know, I was very careful to do so safely, make sure I didn't get shocked or light anything on fire. Um, and I will say that when I tried to do the bypassing the starter solenoid mechanism with some very low amperage wire, I did cause a minor fire in the shed with those wires, uh, but was able to get that taken care of. <laughs> So again, this has been a code companion tutorial, which is a technical look at how I built some code project uh, that I built to help you better understand blockchain technologies. I have several other projects on my website you can check out if you're technically inclined, but all of them are accompanying other tutorials that are not necessarily for people that have to have a CS background. My goal with all my articles, videos, and code projects is to just create new ways to help you understand cryptocurrency and blockchain tech. And I want it to be fun and engaging. So it's fun for me to build these projects and make these tutorials for you. And I hope you enjoy them and find them informative as well. Now, as always, there is a text article on the Chain Tutorials website that accompanies this code companion. And as always, I wanna thank you very much for listening.